in Kenya that uh, once you are over 18 years you are free to do what you want because your family cannot take control over you I feel free when I'm given that chance to be make decisions for myself in our tradition you are respected when you have your home like my grand my grandfather had three wives he had his home gave birth to his sons all his sons had homes my father gave birth to me i'm also expected to have a home though at this time i still don't have a house but i strongly believe that i will have my personal home and personal house I'm Wilfred. Yeah. I'm the first born in our family. Of uh, we are ten, and my fa my father has two wives. Uh -huh. uh, in our my mother is the first wife, and we are six, three boys, three girls. Uh -huh. Then in the second family, the second house, uh, we have four four children, two brothers and two sisters. And it's a boy whom I started teaching at primary school. He's a very disciplined boy and um, he has been very, very useful in programs of SAGI and um, um, he had um, difficulty going to school uh, because his father is just a peasant fisherman and has many children. But uh, sometimes we try to raise some funds and uh, he, he was lucky to finish his, uh, his high school. But uh, luckily enough, after college, uh, we appealed to our Romanian partners who have really supported his college education. They were sending money through SAGI. So I was asking myself that if this man he has come all the way from Romania and is volunteering here, just helping the community, so what, what of me that I'm born here, I know the problems that people face here and I just see him work alone there. So this really touched my heart. In Kenya it's very difficult to get a job. Even if you go to school, you, must, you might go up to PhD but you come back to the village because there is no job. Because Kenya is, there is a lot, of, a lot of corruption. So if you might find that someone has studied a lot and still you don't have any job. My father was is a fisherman. We used to go fishing very early in the morning. And at the same time, you are expected to be in school. So we wake up maybe at three in the morning. You don't have that time to sleep well. You go, to, you go, you go fishing, you fish until seven o'clock. When it reaches time, you rush to school. So, okay. Korogitijimu <laughs> Night fishing mostly they use lamps and sometimes it's legal, sometimes it's illegal. From uh, August to December it is not it is illegal. It means it is not allowed. And when you are caught fishing during that time you are going to you will be arrested. Also the, the, the fishing that uh, they do during the night is sometimes of uh, very disadvantageous because you find you most of them use uh, fuel paraffin. But you find that you go, you light the lamp during the whole night. You do a lot of fishing, but there is no fish. So at the end of the day, you find that you've wasted your paraffin and you don't have money to buy extra to go to the following day.
Ku. Actually, Sagi school has really grown in terms of development because uh, when the school was started in 2007, I was still in high school. And I even, my sister was there. I didn't even know the school, the, where the school was because it was in a, a, a tiny building on the other side of the island. And from that time, the school was very small and there were like five children. They were not even having school uniform. They were going to school b without school uniform. Oh, it has also developed in terms of, uh, of the academic because they always do exams with other schools and they have always won this. They become number two, number one at times. Uh, and also in terms of, uh, of, of the food that they eat. When they were on the other side, you find that most of the children were orphans. But they, they were actually going back to the house, to where the, their mothers or guardians' houses, where sometimes they go, they don't get food, they come back to class, they don't concentrate. But these days they are, they are boarding in school, they take their breakfast in school, they take their lunch in school. So when they go to class, they concentrate. So I see that's a, that as a development that they, are, they have done in the school. My life, most of the times, I, I compare it with SAG, because it was through SAG that I managed to finish my education. Maybe I could also promote them by buying them exams. You know, when I buy exams, they do exams. They, they revise these papers. They are, they, are, they are motivated and this will lead to growth in them. And this will result to good uh, academics. So, and then if I also have a job, I would not only look at the family because uh, I always compare myself, uh, see myself as a, a volunteer because I'm a volunteer in several places. This is thank you, Ero Kamano. Yeah. If you get much of the support from people, it makes you lazy. So I don't always want to believe in support. I, I always ask myself this question that what of if it stops? What are you going to do next? Are there children going to stop schooling because they were earlier sponsored? Now the sponsors are gone. So to make something of important, you must start from children. Personally, I love, I love children and uh, I love working with children. So if these children are taken, as, uh, like in our place here, most of the people are, uh, died out of HIV and AIDS and the children are left alone. So if these children, like what um, Mr. Samuel did, that uh, building a school where orphans and vulnerable, vulnerable children are taken, to, when they have that good education, they learn well and they pass well, they go to university. I believe that in the future they will have a good life because they, they will have work for themselves. You know, when they are going to school, they will, have, they will like have what they want because they have that knowledge, they have the power, they have everything. When uh, we organized for this thing of paying my school fee, nobody knew. It was only my mother, my father and Mr. Samuel who knew of this thing. Uh, I didn't share this information with anyone. And I know if I was to share it with anybody, then definitely people will be jealous. Uh, I had a lot of friends, but now that I don't have so many friends, because when they see me, they see me as a tool of money, that I have a lot of money. They say that when I, I work with white people, I have a lot of money, that I can't waste my time just working with people, white people, and they don't give you anything. So that is a lie. So this time I've lost so many friends, although there are, there are those ones that I still have friends who also understand that they don't give money like that. So I always tell them that even them, most of them who come here, are, most of them are students and they are still going to university. What they do is just they just have, they have that interest maybe to come and see and the, how the culture of Africa, how the African people do their things, not that they are rich. Some of them really work hard to get this money that they used to come here. We started playing football using the uh, balls made of, uh, out of polythene bags. Actually, we were taking part in making these, poly these balls by ourselves. We made these balls, then from there we could take them to the fields where the children could always play. We developed this slowly by slowly and they went so when he came back, he came back with the new balls. So we extended the pitch and it was okay. From there we, we had balls, we got school uniform, 
and the children uh, really caught up well because we were training them not only myself but i also had a friend called john whom we used to train we were training voluntary we were not being paid anything but we just we just saw that it was very important that these children could be introduced to football <laughs> Actually, I used to go to church with my mom, although at that time I can say I was like a church goer because my mother used to take all control over me because there was nothing I could do because I was a child. So she used to tell us to go to church while, uh, yes, we go to church, yes, but we just play even when the preacher is preaching because I didn't know what was, what really going to church meant because you just go, you sit down. It was boring, the pastor is preaching, people are singing, and you just, I just play with my fellow children. But my mother used to encourage us that when going to church, there is someone who created you that you, you, when you go to church, you should have that respect and obey. But being that I was a child, I did not know what to do. God loves me so much because that is why he has kept me alive up to this point. And I strongly believe that God is there and he, I, I, I respect God as my personal savior. I love God. I always pray, though at times I don't go to church, but I strongly believe that God is there because he has kept me up to this time. There are people who do not even see this day today. Uh, I'm not that much better of people who maybe died in road accidents, people who are, who are sickly in bed, but it is just because of God's mercy that I've seen this day. So I respect God so much. Most of the kids here are orphans because you find that this is a place where people, most of people depend on fishing. So you find that most of people want to drop out from school at a tender age, so they go fishing. When they go fishing, maybe they, you find that they've got a, some little, little amount of money. When they get this money, they don't want to make use of it. They will turn, um, utilize this money maybe in doing other things like prostitution. And when they do prostitution, they give back to other kids. Okay, you find that you slept with a woman that was HIV positive. HIV positive is like a monster. Once you realize that you have it, some of us even collapse and die. But it depends with how you take it. Once somebody has recognized that is HIV positive, you would like to, uh, like to spread it to others. Once it's spread to others, you find that uh, these people, who, they also uh, spread this HIV, they have kids. And once they, they, have, they have HIV and they are HIV positive, they don't want to go to school, they think they are going to die. So when they die, the kids are going to be left orphans. There's nobody to take care of the kids. I didn't know that I'm sick. I just always hearing headaches, diarrhea. Then I go to the hospital for a test. So they find me with I'm positive. So they, I go direct to now I'm not feeling very sick, but I'm always trying to do what? Take drugs. So I'm just okay because of drugs I'm taking. According to our culture, polygamy was very important 
during the past days of my grandfathers because this was the time when you find uh, when you have a lot of wives you will give birth to many kids and when you give birth to many kids when you go to do some work or maybe go fishing you go with the whole of your family it was also seen as a, a, a source of wealth when you have many wives you are also respected and recognized in the community so if i have many wives at this time taking care of them will be a problem so in my opinion i encourage that people should not go for the polygamy at this time actually for me i'm planning to have a uh, one wife and maybe two or three kids if extra Samoro gi nyanya re saidi samoro gi dao mangeng mun ka gi mun mangeng samoro mi samoro da ka tiel to be okoni go be mun mangeng okoni go be first i've had two girlfriends whites uh, all from romania the second one was also from romania so we slept in the same room the whole night until the following day so when the following day came she was like, I, I i was sleeping and she was like kicking me like this by the bed there. i was what is this little trying to do to me things went like that and you know men like i said we are very uh, inactive when it comes to sex so oh uh, she kicked me like that and i was like oh, go let me sleep then finally she i just had to i just started touching romancing her and because I'm a man and also have feelings and to prove that I'm a man I, I had to do it then everything went on like that and we she started ignoring me and then I said oh this is what relationship is then I said I better remain like this rather than being in a relationship where you have to quarrel every now and again I I always have dreams and they are saying that dreams are always some uh, always true so uh first I always have a dream of uh, of traveling maybe even if not Europe but traveling outside Africa so when I go to a place like I'm um, I'm over 18 so if if I even, if I was to go in a place where I'm with the white people maybe to stay there for like 5 to 10 years I would uh, I would I would just cope up with their culture actually how it's from there that definitely have to marry from there because you don't expect me that I'm 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 in Europe and my wife in is in Kenya that one cannot work so where I am is that is where my wife has to be and I I would also be very glad because I've always I've also dreamt about this actually it had happened I had I'd had two uh, two white girlfriends and uh, although they are, they have hated me at some point and I have forgotten about that because maybe I always said said say to myself that uh, okay love is like a rubber band held by two hands when one leaves it hurts the other so i always encourage myself that maybe they were not meant for me and that's why i left them so if uh, i also have a belief that one day i will have a, a wife yes but when this needs like love trust honesty understanding are met then i think uh, i will just live well everything will be good with me of yes i've also dreamt of having a, a wife that is or uh, as those qualities but the dreams that i've always had was uh, i uh, i've always had of a, a dream of having a uh, a lady that is not of, from our country
Mane wach mane go kende. Kuru wutu maber. Upare wa kata kusendi kunipara. Unge kumachom. Ruot me polo eja pito. Ma pida. A unge nga makwayo. To jaobe nga sae makwayo malamo ten mome ya gimachamu. Omeo, Raka Kuruki, you woke up. Woke on a gija over in your side pole. Wood go do. Okay, you go at you. Eh, at you go at you. Kaki, you be wood on a gija over in your side pole. Wood go do. 